dead microwave autopsy video. So this is going to be part two of my microwave video from earlier today where this thing malfunctioned and almost started itself on fire. Well, I was fortunate enough to catch it in time and smell the burning inside the microwave and stop it, but as you can see here, I've got it disassembled because I was looking to see exactly where things went wrong and since we're dealing with microwave ovens here, I just would like to point out for a fact that microwaves are not very safe things to play around with because of these three components here. You've got magnetron which puts out electromagnetic radiation. You've got a high voltage transformer which puts out 2000 volts of AC current. And then you've got a capacitor here which hooks into a diode here and it generates 4,000 volts out of that to run the microwave. Now, 4,000 volts at probably like an amp or two, I think. But anyways, that's uh, more than enough current to uh, kill you if you get on the wrong side of it. So, uh, again, state, uh, watch this video, but don't actually do this yourself. Because everything you see here, these three things here, can cause you a lot of harm if you uh, get on their bad side. So now that I've gotten the uh, disclaimers out of the way, I'll just kind of start in here and say that I took this apart and I examined everything and the capacitor, the transformer, and the magnetron all look to be in perfectly fine shape. So my attention is drawn to the control board here and this is your typical microwave control board. There's a touch screen on the other side here and you've got a little microchip here that uh, collects your digits and uh, programs the uh, relays up here to uh, cook your food in the manner that you prescribe. And I think that this chip has bit the ghost because as I had described uh, earlier in the previous video what had happened was, was that when I came into the kitchen the uh, my display here was at an impossible time and it was stuck. Also the carousel in the microwave was stuck too. It wasn't moving and it was on full power. So I think it's just a case of bad electronics. But anyways, you've got your high voltage capacitor here. This is the label. It's 2100 volts at 91 microfarads. And there is a bleeder resistor in here, but you don't ever trust those. So with high voltage capacitors, when they're free like this, you always want to short the terminals because they can rebuild their charge and you definitely don't want to be grabbing for one of these that's charged and well let's just say you'll find out that it has a very shocking personality and then this is the microwave oven transformer again this is the this is the diode that forms a voltage doubler circuit you've got two terminals here which provide filament power and then you've got uh, this is primary and this is secondary and then terminals for the primary on the other side and then the whole metal shell here, this iron core of the transformer is uh, the return for the secondary circuit. Magnetron here, you've got two terminals for your cathode heater and you don't have a third because this is a uh, directly heated cathode. And then the whole shell of the magnetron is the anode. And so that's how it forms the circuit. And then in the middle here, you've got your magnetron cavity, and then you've got your two ferrite magnets that help with the uh, microwave generation. Now, I should point out that if you've ever actually looked at a microwave oven schematic, you'll notice that the voltage doubler circuit's a little different than what you typically would find on the internet. And if you look, all the components, it, it looks like it's flipped. And I was studying this for a bit too, and it finally made sense to me what was going on, and that this whole power supply here for the microwave actually generates a negative voltage. The anode is held at ground potential through the uh, through the chassis and through your grounding wire here so that all your voltage is a negative voltage and it stays on this or actually it stays stays on this terminal here. That way you don't run the risk of getting shocked when you uh, touch your microwave because I'm just trying to think here now because like this is grounded. This is a grounded connection and it's a grounded outlet but if you have the 
I gotta look and see how this is wired, but I'm just curious. Curious, what would happen if the uh, if you had a reverse wired outlet and you didn't have the ground on here to uh, on the ground here to protect you? So I'm not gonna try and ponder on that either right now. I might look it up later and try and and see what would happen. But I would imagine that they've thought of that because I'm sure there are plenty of homes where you've got a, a cheater plug and someone might stick it in upside down. But anyways, uh, I'm getting way off track here. So, And then the last object here that's part of the microwave system is this little gadget here. And this is the thermal cutout. It's a basically a thermostat. You'll see similar things on like coffee maker elements and stuff like that. It was just sitting right up here and this thing shuts down power when it gets too hot. So like if my microwave had caught on fire, the uh, whole system would have just stopped. But at that point, I think... Uh, I probably would have been foobard anyways, because, well, fire is a fire, and so that's all plastic, flammable stuff. But I digress. I mean, good life lesson here. Watch your microwave when it's cooking stuff, or at least don't be very far from it. And again, I'll reiterate for a third time, don't take your microwave apart. I know I've got some younger viewers on the channel. Don't take your microwave apart. This can kill you. Your parents would be very depressed about that. Watch the video, but don't do it yourself. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.